Hey guys, Daniel here. This is another video. And in this video, I'm joined by the amazing Lee Lowridge. Uh, for those who don't know, Lee is an amazing colorist. Odds are, if you're a comic book fan, you've read his work. Uh, he's worked on comics such as Deadly Class, The Good Asian, uh, Southern Cross, Crude, Hellboy Wolf, Stumptown, The Mask, Old Haunts, and so much more. Uh, he's worked for Marvel and DC on titles such as Deadpool vs. Old Man Logan, uh, Spider-Man, The Punisher, Star Wars, Power Man and Iron Fist, Venom, The Hulk, X-Men, Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe, and so much more. Uh, he's also worked on Batman Adventures, and he'll soon be doing Batman vs. Big B. Uh, so he's just done so much different comics, and Lee is very kindly agreed to come on for an interview and let me annoy him. Uh, but Lee, thank you so much for coming on. How are you doing today? I'm good, and you're welcome. Yeah, it's just, it, that was an amazing introduction, wasn't it? I, I'm was so good, impressed. Yeah. Yeah, Can you introduce yeah. me to women? Well, I, it's, it's that easy. You know, we have so much pull here on the YouTube channel. You know, I have, like I said, life of yeah. a YouTube comic booker. So easy. And oh, I know. I know. Yeah, I so, so much different things I want to talk about. Uh, but before we get into it, let's talk about the basics. So how did you get into comic books? Uh, I had a friend that was working with Marvel at the time. And I was never really into comic books, but I was looking to get a job in an art field. Mm. So uh, he introduced me to comics and I was kind of blown away. And that's what set me down that path. And so then what was your first like comic book work, you know? Um, I think I have it somewhere. Um, it was Showcase 94. Wow. We born, right? What's this? What's the year 90? Was that with the dinosaurs? Born. 2007. 2007 you were born yeah so this was 94 so uh dc used to do like kind of up and comers in comics and they would do an issue every month and it was all like unknowns so yeah. i pestered dc for like a year and a half trying to get work and then met mark torello and basically wasn't going to let him out of the room until he gave me work so they <laughs> hired did. you out of fear or sympathy or maybe a little Probably. bit of both I don't, yeah, definitely. I was the one who had the fear, I think. Uh, I think just being a complete and total pain in the ass might have gotten me the, the little 10 pager I did. Yeah, so I can't wait to see that throughout the interview. Uh, but of course, so like getting to work in comics, did you know from the very start you wanted to be a colorist or did you debate being an artist or writer? More. First, to draw them, I knew I'd have to spend a good 10 years, and I'm god-awful slow. Um, <laughs> so I, I wouldn't be able to make a living right away. So then I figured, oh, maybe I'll ink. So I started doing pages, inking pages, and it would take me like two days to ink a page. So that's not a really great living. And then I, on the color side, I was at that time, I was big into graffiti. So I did a, you know, I always had sketchbooks and they were filled with marker comps and the color back in the nineties, I'd say pre spawn before spawn came out was pretty bad. Yeah. Um, so I, I was pretty confident I could do a much better job than the people that were doing it. Cause it was sort of an afterthought in the seventies, you know, it was, you know, like an assistant would do it, you know, they just, bang it out and get it done. And there was really no craft to it. Not, not for a while. Some books there were, but for the most part, it wasn't. And yeah. I knew, so I started doing those pages and I knew I could get a decent amount of those of pages done per day that would afford me a living. So really that picking color just came out of thin air. The stories I like to write work now, but they wouldn't have worked then. I, I'm not into superheroes, so. Like if I wrote Batman, I'd, I'd kill him. Page three. He's dead. <laughs> Joker blows his brains out. He's dead. Yeah. Wow. Man. And I wonder why you're not working for DC. Well, you know, coming up with a story like that on the spot, you know, death of Batman. And But yeah, you say you're not a fan of superheroes. Yeah, you've done a lot of superhero work. I, I have. I, I'm not, I'm sorry. I, I'm a fan of superheroes. I would never want to write superheroes. Yeah, but it's coloring like, them. It's pretty hard to, to do what it's already been done. Yeah, so like all of this was back in like 1994. Now this was like back in the Stone Age because everything before I was born was the Stone Age. And um, but yeah, no. Sure, so yeah. did you color digitally, or how did you color uh, back then? Hand. Hand. Yep. So they would send. <laughs> this is funny. You find this interesting because it's not. 
uh, <laughs> I would get um, two copies of each page on Strathmore. It was marker paper, and it was two size. And uh, I do it. You could do it in marker or you know gouache or watercolor, anything you wanted. So you'd paint the whole page, and then you'd have to put a color code off to the side, like I have to, like your face. I would color your flesh since you're a white male. That is correct. I draw, I draw a line off of you and I would write yellow 25, red 25. So that's yellow 25%, red 25. And that tells the person who is who does have a computer, and I believe they were called Cod Barrett's. And that computer basically was just like Photoshop. That computer did color separations. That's all it did. I've never worked on one. And I believe it's called the Cod Barrett, but that's all that was. So these guys guys would go to some operator that would plug all that stuff in. Wow. And, then, and they would do the separation. So you, you'll see a lot of those books from the nineties look like complete and told, am I allowed to swear? Can I say shit on this podcast? Absolutely. These videos don't make any money, you know, so say whatever you want. <laughs> you don't have to worry. So, uh, they would look like shit, but a lot of times it was because it was just some operator plugging in all this stuff, you know, with a mouse and yeah. not being able to really paint it. So it was better off back then to, to keep it simple. And I, I think I got into the digital end and I think my first book was in 90, shit, six, probably 96 yeah. for uh, image. It was a oh, book wow. called Aga. Sorry, what was it called? Arcaga. I think we oh. did an issue. <laughs> that's wow. when uh, that's when indie books didn't sell well at all. It's definitely not that now. You know, now indie sell just as well. So I imagine that over time it got easier to be a colorist. You know? Yeah. No. Yeah. It, once uh, once I got well, the, or I started on Photoshop. Like Photoshop it wasn't oh. it wasn't Photoshop one. It was just Photoshop, and that had no layers. You had to do it in channels. There was no history. There's no, it was really uh, pretty archaic, but um, it was way better than doing it by hand, but it took forever. Yeah. You know, so it paid quite a bit more, but it took a lot longer. And then, you know, then we figured out ways to have guys do flats for us and, and aid in the process to save, you know, save hours. So like I said, you're swimming in that cash, that sweet comic book dough. Um, Sweet bro, dude. I know what I spent it on. Well, enlighten me. Just drugs and women. <laughs> no, guys, he doesn't mean that. He's, he's not talking straight, you know. And <laughs> this channel does not represent his views. He's trying to get <laughs> me sued. How what? old are you, Daniel? How old are you? 13. 13. All right. I'm a grizzled I'm, old man. I, I spent it on, uh, I don't know, candy and, and education education wow we love education I spent it on my teeth i spent it on my teeth and education <laughs> wow that's perfect and conveniently that works especially in our favor and but whenever i interview colorists i always like to mess with my lights so there's all these different light sources shining on me and they always get so distracted so i'm just gonna wait for you to start slipping up you know look at it, it's dark outside now so you don't get the window light shining in but well, and so yeah sorry i, I won't get distracted yeah, you do strike me as someone who does get distracted a lot. No, your parlor tricks aren't going to trick me, buddy. <laughs> I couldn't get your credit card information earlier, so I'll have to come up with something harder. Uh, but so then how did, yeah. like, Deadly Class come about? Because I see it on your cap there. So how did, like, probably one of your most famous comics come about? How did Deadly Class come about? That was um, Rick Remender. Rick used to live down the street from me. We, uh... He lived like five houses down and then he had a bunch of ideas and he was over one night and was telling me about the, the idea for deadly class. Um, and then we were discussing, he knew, I can't remember really. I, I'll just revise history. It, we decided like we wanted to do this one together and um, it was called Reagan youth at the time. Oh and, yeah. Um, right for like a minute and then um, found Wes Craig to do the art and then Wes did some samples and then I started playing with those samples and I think we did like an eight pager. And if you if you do a dive on the internet, you can find that eight pager because it's full model. Not, not, like, not like 
Marvel dipped in oil full mar model, yeah. but like it's modeled, not flat. So I started doing that flat. Then I went full model. We pitched it. We got we got it approved. And then Rick came over because I don't like that. I said I know you wouldn't like that. So that's why I saved the flat pages. And because I'm I'm a fan of flat. Yeah. I think I think if if you can't pull it off flat, then then the art you're working over is garbage. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so here I have, of course, Deadly Class Issue 1. I think this was one of those image firsts, you know? Yeah, and it just the show came out, I think. Yeah, exactly. And so, like, speaking of, like, Deadly Class, so, like, over time, do you, like, develop color palettes for a specific book? Like, from the very start, like, for, for a specific character, you'll say, okay, I'll use this shade of red to color this specific pair. Uh, do you do that for your characters or your comic? Yeah, I know what the characters are, but I don't make a palette for a book. I know a lot of guys do have palettes for books. Yeah, and those, those guys, I call those guys lunatics. Uh, <laughs> if it's not your way, it's the wrong way. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, no. So like, and Deadly Cast was also turned into a TV show, which you touched on. So what was it like, like seeing a comic book that you color turned into a TV show? Was that a bit like, was it, was it really surreal for you, or? It was cool. I, I thought they, I thought they did a really good job. Yeah. And exactly, I mean, for and I, unfortunately, it only went one season, so we never got to see that sweet, sweet season two. But it did also continue in the comics. Um, but I believe the most recent issue of Deadly Class was was it issue forty eight. I think it's forty eight that just came out. Yeah, and so where can people pick that up from their local comic book store? Yeah, or yeah, uh, yeah. just a little yeah. bit of promotion there. Um, but yeah, no, so like, of course, looking back at Deadly Cast, when you first uh, started uh, coloring it, did you ever think that someday this would be turned into a TV show? I mean, that's the hope. Yeah. You, know? you think that for all your comic books, that this is going to be someday turned into a TV show? I think, I think everybody who creates a comic wants that, you know, wants to see it live on further than comics. Um, whether that it end up good or bad, you know, there's a lot of comics that have I mean, Jesus, what was that? Was it a, was it Pun not Punisher? What, what, uh, shoot, what was the one movie? Is your dementia setting in? That's a good one, Daniel. I'm going to reach through the screen and choke you. Singer. Uh, I'm just so uh, good at this channel. Daredevil. Now, the first Daredevil. Did you ever see that movie with Ben Affleck? Oh, and Colin Farrell as Bullseye? Great the casting worst, choice. The worst movie ever. So No I way. If you like that movie? If you see Colin Farrell bald throwing cards around and you say that's a bad film, you're uncultured. That was so good. I mean, of course it's silly, but I, I guess it's kind of dated. Uh, but yeah, that's your least favorite film of all time. Well, I'm saying if I wrote that and then that's what came out, <laughs> I'd be pretty upset. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so speaking yeah. of that superhero films, are you a fan of the superhero films or TV shows? Um, I love the first X-Men. I love Logan. Um, I'm actually, I'm enjoying Sweet Tooth. Yeah, on Netflix. I, uh, I didn't think I would. I never read the comic. I, I didn't know what it was about based on like a log line. I didn't think I would care at all about it, but I, I really like that. I like the show. Um, makes, now I'll probably go read the book. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not... You know, like the early Spider-Mans, now they're just kind of redoing everything. Aquaman, I got through maybe, shit, <laughs> five minutes of that CGI madness. It just gave me, that was, a, what a terrible movie. Uh, well, I don't know if it was terrible. I didn't make it through it. <laughs> I made it, it five minutes. Suicide Squad, I couldn't get through that. The new uh, one? No, the one from a few years back. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, I like Joker. Joker. People, oh, the Todd Phillips one, yeah? A lot of people, a lot of my friends hated it. I thought it was great. I thought it was a great origin story for Joker. I thought it was perfect. You have uh, friends? I just like three. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was good. Like, I mean, people want a part two, but I don't think, you know, a film like that really needs a part two. No, like I think, yeah, no part two. No part two. It, it is, it's got to go even darker. How do you do that? Anything to get those sweet, sweet, uh, those sweet, sweet monies, or so did the DC company think. Um, it's true. Yeah. So yeah, speaking of like superhero stuff, then how did you begin working for like companies like Marvel or DC? Because I mean, you've colored a lot of comics, like something over a thousand, maybe. Uh, over two thousand. Two thousand. How do people keep on hiring you? How do you manage to just you know cheat your way uh, into all of this? 
And probably you know, I hit deadlines. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm, I've never been late. It doesn't happen. Oh, except for so, this interview. We were meant to do this two hours ago and you showed up like. No, we weren't. We were supposed to do it too. Drugs and women. Oh, yeah. No, money messing with women. Um, but yeah, no. So getting to work for like DC and Marvel. So did they come to you and say, we want uh, you to start working for us? No. No, you got to You have to bug them for years. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, well, I got my start with DC. And then once I got a little 10 pager, then I started doing Green Arrow. They offered me that. And then I was just relentless trying to get work. You know, I, I, I knew I kicked the door open. And I wanted to keep it open. Yeah. And so have you always been freelance? Yeah. Yeah. And would you ever, if anyone tried to get you to sign like a contract to stay on at DC or Marvel, would you accept that? Nope. No? Do you like being freelance, you know? Do you like the benefits yeah. of it? Yeah. The benefits of it are awesome. I can work for whoever I want. <laughs> Yeah, and like I said, like Deadly Class, didn't you do that up to like issue 15 and you only like recently enough came back? Yeah, then I came back. Yeah, and so then what was the decision to leave Deadly Class? How did that come about? We were like, I'm so sick of color- coloring sometimes comics. Just want, sometimes you just want to leave a project for a while. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so like you've colored a lot of comics. Yeah, I, that around that time I got, I was so busy and it was, I didn't think it would go past much farther past that. So yeah, and then. And then getting to come back to Deadly Class, what was that like? That was awesome. It was yeah. great. I you thought could... it was good that we could all finish it out together. Reap those benefits. Yeah, and is it meant to end at issue 52? Not sure. Not sure? I thought you were meant to know everything about everything about no, comic I think, books. I think, it's a, I think it's a surprise how many issues it has. Great. Now I have to go track down Rick Remender and Wes Craig. Oh, man, this is going to take so long. Um, but, yeah, no. Uh, so, like, of course, you've gotten to work on, like, a, a variety of different uh, comics, but, like, is there any comic in particular that you really enjoyed working on that you feel doesn't get enough limelight? Um, initially, I thought it was Deadly Class. Oh, um, of course. They should make a TV show out of that. Yeah, but then it got eyes on it. Yeah, that, yeah. that book, I was shocked it came out because it, it, it's you can't you can't please everyone. It seems like the masses like flashier stuff, mainstream stories and stuff like that. I'm, I'm more attracted to more culty stuff and that's not mainstream. So the more punk rock side of comics, I guess. Oh yeah, you know, I absolutely. Don't want, I don't want a normal, I don't want anything normal. I don't know. Yeah, I uh, sure thing. And so what's your approach to like coloring a page? Do you set it out and then you do the flats or like, how do you actually approach coloring a page? Do you set it up in your computer or? I'll, I'll read the script first. And then uh, like a, a script's always perfect when they give me a time of day. And then, uh, um, and then I'll just figure out, you know, I'll just set up the scenes from there. But usually I'll just, I'll just get going page one. I'll read like, the whole script and then just jump back to page one and get going but really it's the only setup is i get everything local first so like the sky is blue clouds are white you know do the characters complete everything normal well i'll call it vanilla every vanilla generic you know completely generic lighting and then i'll go and into it and start laying palettes and stuff like that over it you know, so if it's like a night scene, you know, everything, I'll wash everything in blues first. Yeah. And then go back in, separate planes, and then do some modeling, you know, highlights, shadow, stuff like that. But it's all, all, all it'll always have to do with time of day and then really mood or um, if you want to build tension or if it's emotion, you know, like I love, I love to do scenes that where it's building intensity and I'll literally dial up the red in each panel like 5%. You won't even see it coming. You know, wow. I love stuff like that. And then by the end, you know, by page six, it's, you know, the whole page is blood red. Yeah. And so do you think like over time you found out more tricks about coloring pages, like all these little things you can do, like, for example, like moving up red 5%. And so you like notice you found out more like tricks, I suppose you could say over time or shortcuts. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I operate in shortcuts. I'm, I'm very fast. Yeah, um, but I've done it forever. But yeah, I know what works and what doesn't for me. Yeah, you know, there's 
the thing with Photoshop, there's there's probably you know 500 routes to get to the same destination. I just happen to take the quickest and most efficient route. <laughs> yeah, and that's why companies my, love you. In my opinion. In your in your humble opinion, you know. Tell me more about how great you are. No, I'm messing around. Uh, no, it's as I have my way, which I I know is the fastest. Yeah. I don't use a bunch of layers. I know guys use 30, 40 layers. I use about three to four layers. It's not the best for editing if you have to fix things, but I have tricks for that. Um, that you can't reveal, you know? But a lot of, you know, people work in different ways. And I'm the one with the parlor secrets. Do you hear this? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, so how many pages can you get in a day if you're really focused? A couple million? Depends on the book. Like, uh, like the Batman book I'm doing? Uh, yeah. Six? For that, and that, that's high modeling. There's a lot of modeling in that book. Oh, yeah. Is that um, Batman versus Big B? Yeah, Batman versus B. Page, and the next eight take me three hours because I've wow. set the palettes up. You know what wow. I mean? So it's hard to say, but I mean, I've, I've, I've had crazy deadlines where I've done, I think my record is 23 pages in a day. Wow. That's practically a full comic. It is a full comic. I mean, you didn't well, do 24. Comic, you didn't. I mean, so it's not really. It's not 24. Can't believe you 24. DC, DC's books are 20 now. What, 22, 20? Actually. Marvel's 20 pages. I can't count, so I never look at them. Um, but so, like, yeah. what's, sorry, what's your favorite thing to color? Like, is it a splash page? Or do you just have something that, like, oh, yes, I can't wait to, you know, color this? Or do you just dread everything? Because you seem like a very spiteful person. So I'd be interested to hear. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, I'm off as spiteful? Crazy. <laughs> I guess that's just because I'm so apathetic. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know what it is, Daniel? I'm the first honest person you've ever talked to. Yeah, that's right, college, you know. Except your parents. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, you've yet to tell me how brilliant I am. Then me. Well, you've done nothing to prove that. <laughs> <laughs> no one expects uh, much of you. You'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, I get uh, by on my looks and my personality, as I'm sure you can see here. Uh, but so, yeah, color and splash pages, is that something you enjoy doing? Because I noticed one uh, at the end of Deadly Class 1. Yeah, I like splash. I, it, I'm not sure what... I like simple stuff yeah. simple so, when when the story is being told in a, in a beautiful way that's that's what i like oh, yeah like and does that pop up a lot pulling. i just i like yeah it's it's hard to say it pages that breathe i'm attracted to where there's a lot of room to breathe on that page is what i like when a page is too cluttered and there's so much stuff going on it's you know it, they say uh 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that comes up a lot in your work but do you notice like differences between artists like some artists may take specific shortcuts and like some may be a bit more sketchy some may be more clean and do you notice that while you color their pages yeah it's interesting because there's a lot of times where I'll really like someone's art and then when I go to color it I'll realize they're really not that good of an artist mm. so when you go to paint over somebody you really you can really tell that, you know, if they're really thinking about what they're drawing or if their technique is, you know, is amazing or not. You know, some guys will leave tangents everywhere and it's just stuff just doesn't work when you start laying color because they're not drawing with that in their brain. So I guess more of the point is the good artists think three dimensionally and they think with color in mind. And I think the guys that aren't as good, um, they're not thinking about that. They're just trying to draw a comic book page that looks like a comic book page they grew up looking at you know, it's a derivative, a lot of derivative artists drawing things like that look like the things that they loved growing up. And the stories are derivative to that. That's why I don't like a lot of superhero stuff. Of it's course, you'll never say that to the writer or editor or artist or anyone. On that oh, I'll tell it to them. Listen, <laughs> hey, writers, no more uh, gun trade house by the docks. 
<laughs> oh, Excellent. what if it's inside an abandoned warehouse? Yeah, no one does gun deals in abandoned warehouses in history. It's never been done. You know a bit too much about well, gun you, trades. Oh, well, you're in Ireland. That's what you guys do. <laughs> oh, yeah. we oh, Spoken like a true American. We're the ones that shoot at stuff. Okay. No, Americans don't shoot any, <laughs> anybody. We just shoot everybody. <laughs> you only shoot at each other, so it's technically okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. There's definitely... We definitely have a problem with guns here. <laughs> yeah, but like like I said, as long as there's no like gun deals at the docks, well, then how bad can it really be? And, right. But do you ever get like notes, like a specific artist would say, I'd like this to be something like this or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I like getting notes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. If somebody has something in their head, give it to me. Don't let me do it and then go, oh, I was thinking that should have been done this way. You know, I'd rather yeah. have it up front. Takes, it takes the thought out of my brain. And it, it'll also affect the entire story. So if I saw a scene as like bathed in red and you saw it as bathed in, you know, amber, now I, that'll, it, that'll change everything. That could change every scene in the story because I don't want to overdo any one palette. So yeah, yeah I, like I don't like them after I'm done. I like them before. Yeah. And so, like, also, I want to touch on, like, your superhero work. I was like, over time now, now that you've actually begun working on, like, superhero comics, like, you've obviously done quite a lot. Have you warmed up to the concept of superheroes? Or are you still just really hateful towards them? Oh, no, no. I love superhero comics. I just oh, yeah? never want to write them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, so, I'm... like, are you still there? Yeah, you hear that? Oh, right, yeah, yeah, perfect. Um, so, they're yeah, like... Get my, they're coming to get my guns. I hear the police sirens going by, so I'm assuming you got caught for something. No, I live in a rough area, man. We kill people. <laughs> you, <laughs> you kill people <laughs> who disrespect you in terms of comic books. Yeah, no, I give them, I give them COVID. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it's that easy. If you I start coughing, gun. we're ending the Zoom me, and I'm not going to catch any viruses over this computer. I'll shoot you with COVID. <laughs> you just whip out a little COVID gun and shoot your computer. Some top intelligence coming from the Americans yet again. I'm gonna yeah. mess if, if you're American and you're subscribed, please stay subscribed. We very much what, value uh, you. What did Ireland think of Trump? Ireland, I mean, you know, as, you, as I'm sure you can see, I'm a very political person. So, you are? yeah, my thoughts on the matter. No, I'm not a political person. I couldn't tell you the first thing about politics, you know? I mean, no, this, I didn't know. I didn't ask you about politics. Just what do you think of that guy as a human? Trump? I could take him in a fight. I could take Trump in a fight. Not that I'm gonna, but I could. I like it. You can trying to get an answer you're, you're dodging it because you got to keep it neutral for youtube you can say <laughs> are you trying to get me <laughs> are you trying to get me to pick a side yeah man i'm leading you i'm leading you <laughs> so you're trying to get you're trying to get a 13 year old right to politically incriminate himself on his youtube channel correct <laughs> that's this is the most on. interesting interview i've done yet when i came on today i was like i'm gonna get this little kid canceled by the end of the <laughs> I'm uncancelable. I just can't be. Like I said, looks yeah. and personality. I get by on it. So, well, you get you get something. <laughs> I've, I've I've yet to be punched in real life. So, what well, I mean, I've been punched before, but not in real life. Obviously, only 13. Well, it's only yeah, a matter of time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, if you try to punch me, I could dodge you and then bust your hip, and you just kind of fall if apart. I punch you, I go to jail. What? So. <laughs> if. If I just like, if I blew wind at you, you just turn to dust like a skeleton, you know? No, Crazy. I would knock your head right off your body. <laughs> oh, it's easy for you to say, Mr. Tough Area. Uh, but let's <laughs> let's not get caught up into the theatrics of our made to be funny. <laughs> for Daniel's parents, I'm, I'm just kidding. Oh, of course. Kid. Yeah, I, I mean, I doubt kid. anyone really thought you were going to come and beat me up. So I tell you, you know, we're not too worried, you know? <laughs> First flight over to Ireland. Um, yeah, but yeah, no. Trying to break you out of your character, you know? Trying to break you out of it. So you, you know, can't. There's no facade it. here. All right. No, I get it. Yeah, but when we talked before we went on, you're like, yo, what's up? <laughs> yeah, uh, and I, I flashed my Glock at you just so you wouldn't try anything funny. Yeah. You were showing me your gold chains and stuff. <laughs> you got oh, familiar. man, I'm going to have to remove so much of this, man, if you keep on. <laughs> you, can't or we'll just... it, man. you can't edit. I, can't... Oh, yeah. I have to keep it all unfiltered, you know, just the full, you know, version. Um, but yeah, I don't even know where we were going before you just tried to incriminate me. Um, but yeah, no, so like your, your love of comics, like, like, so you weren't a fan growing up at all? No. No, not at all? And so then... No, like, I, I read like Mad Magazine. 
Uh, I was into like, you probably didn't, you probably never heard of wacky packages. No. I can show you. Wow. Yay. I'm sure you just have one on your person. I do. I have them on my bookshelf. So they made the, all this stuff. They made fun of brands. Downy, drowny. Oh, man. Wormy packages. Gator. What's it? Gatorade. Yeah. Uh, I love these things. And the art. I love the art. Uh, so that was kind of, these were probably the first thing that grabbed me artistically. And then yeah. I love Mad Magazine. Um, it's not that I didn't like comics. I didn't know anyone that read them. Yeah. So I think the first comic I really ever read, the first comic I did. So, and I, I was blown away. I love them. I, I think they're great. I wish I would have gotten into them as a kid, but I probably saved a lot of money. Yeah, and you don't strike me as someone who reads very much, you know? I see, I can see you choose a lot of picture books. Sweet dig, bro. <laughs> I'm just, I'm on fire, man. You know, I'm just yeah, throwing out the insults, you know? It goes both ways. Um, but yeah, no, so now, like, you over time, like... as someone that only reads. <laughs> <laughs> only reads, yeah, of course. Um, but, like, so you've done, like, so much. Like, so, it, does it kind of amaze you how much comics you've done? Like, do you look back and say, oh, I can't believe I've done that much? Yeah. I wish now I could just go back and do them all again, where I wouldn't have to, I just, I wouldn't have to hustle for anything new. I could just go, I'm just going to do all those again until I'm dead. You know? What a lovely concept. <laughs> yeah. Are you still there? Oh yeah, uh, perfect. Yeah. And but yeah, no, so like, I imagine like, obviously, like if you could go back in time and tell younger Lee Lowridge, maybe one with less, Lee Lowridge, one with uh, less wrinkles, what would you, what advice would you give him for getting into comics and, what was something you wish you knew about coloring before you started becoming a professional colorist? What would I tell him about getting into comics? Hmm. Uh, I would say write your own stories, handle your own art teams and do it all yourself. Yeah. Yep. And so like, do you get your comics? Uh, I know a lot of colors get their comics flatted uh, by some people. Do you get, and do you get anyone else to help you with your pages or help you? color? Yeah, I have a guy from Ireland. No way. Is it me? Is it, have I just not realized this whole time? Have I secretly been doing it? No. Uh, D Kniff. He's from Ireland. No way. D, yeah, D, yeah, I know. D is an amazing colorist. He, he yeah. helps you with your work. Yeah. D has, he's got, he's got a little, he's got a flatting business. Wow. He does from a lot of guys. So he colors and then he has the, the flatting side of what he does. So you so outsource D, to people yeah. more talented than you. Wow. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's Irish. Dude, I'm, I'm Lockridge, okay? That's Irish, buddy. <laughs> Lockridge, Irish. Lockridge, and Lowridge. I think it got lost, lost a bit in translation. It is I'm from the what is it? The border of uh, Ireland and Scotland, right there, right at the, right between the two. I'm right in the water. <laughs> yeah, no. Everyone always says like I'm two percent Irish, so I assume that's the same for you. You know, right? You just have I that. Sm- I haven't broke down the percentages. <laughs> no, do you not? Do you not? Do you never get one of those like uh, DNA tests you can do to find out like, oh, you're forty percent this or anything like that? No, I don't want to know. No, because <laughs> you're you're just a freak of nature. You don't you don't want to yeah. know what type of. Yeah, I don't want to know. <laughs> uh, yeah, you'd prefer not to. And but so, have you have any comics to come out recently that you'd like to promote? Uh, really? Now we're just doing good Asian. Good Asian. Class. Um. Doing a bunch of stuff for AWA. Wow. Um, that's Axel Alonso's new thing. Axel was the editor in chief of at Marvel. Um, but I, yeah, I'm working for a bunch of working on a bunch of different things. I kind oh, of yeah? kind of spread it out. So but, good Asian uh, is that is issue four or is it on issue one or what, what's good Asian on right now? I, is four coming out? I don't. Did three just come out? Yeah, tree might have or something mad, but so can yeah, like, people so, I can assume just pick that up from their local comic book store. Yeah, I think everything now is on either at the shop or at Comicsology, right? Yeah, I think they, exactly. they, it's all carried there. And so, do you ever get like a writer come up to you and say, "All right, we want to pitch this to a to this company. Will you color the pages for us or anything like that?" Yeah. Oh yeah, is that like common? Yeah, that's kind of common. Or what do you get more? Do you get more like? Do you get more of like that people come and want you to pitch or do you get like companies reaching out to you or 
it'll both if someone wants to pitch we usually will build the team first we'll all build the book together and then go pitch it oh wow if someone just wants me after the fact then they'll just ask yeah and so like um of course you've been putting in quite a few different things but you consider yourself like you prefer a specific genre like are you someone uh, sorry are you someone that can do like a really like a comedic bright and happy comic and then go to like a gritty dark noir comic is that are, are you that type of colorist wait that does both yeah that you can like you can kind of dip your toes in every genre yeah 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 sure and do you prefer working like that and like do you prefer like going into all these because i just had writer on jason aaron and he was talking about like how he loves all these like going into it and writing for different genres so is that the same for you as a colorist like do you like or do you prefer like one specific genre I mean, I prefer darker. Yeah? Yeah. Like but Garth Ennis like, dark? Yeah, yeah. Garth yeah. Ennis. I've, really? I've, worked, I've worked with him a bunch. Really? What have you worked with? I'm not going to tell you. You're going to have to look for yourself. Oh, of course. you're. I Like, while researching you, man, I didn't know which comics to talk about. You've done about 50 million. And I've worked with Jason Aaron, who you just talked to. And I know you've worked with Declan Chalvey, who I interviewed. Like I said, I, I interviewed almost every. Like, I mean, odds are if you've done over 2,000 comics, you know, we're bound to come across the same people. Yeah. And convenient. Got, got, I saw Garth, like, right before COVID. Actually? At, uh, in England. Oh, yeah. I, I, think he's, is he, I think he's up in New York now, from what I've heard. From, for I keep tabs on all these big, famous comic book writers, you know? Yeah, he's a good, he's a good guy. Yeah. Ireland's own, you know, of course, once he got the chance, he left for a better, uh, for probably a better, uh, for his mansion, I imagine, living off some. Uh, but another question, actually, I want to ask you, this is something I was thinking about recently, and I figure you're the best person to ask, uh, because, you know, let's be honest, your knowledge is very limited, but I can come up with something. Um, right. Yeah. Don't <laughs> insult me after I give you uh, a profound answer. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, but so this question I was thinking about a lot, like, do you think that you could, like, if you never were from Africa, DC, you could have actually had a good career? like working for Image AWA. Like, do you think it's possible to kind of build a career working for companies outside of Marvel and DC? I think you can now. I don't think you could have yeah. during the 90s and the 2000s. Hmm. I think it still helps people to go and, like if someone's doing an indie book or wants to do an indie book, it, it certainly doesn't hurt to go do a six issue Batman run, you know, build hmm. that you know that readership up and then do your indie book but a lot of people don't go with you you know what i mean a lot of people and I, I think that's what breaks a lot of writers egos you know if someone's writing like wolverine then they go out and do their own book and it only sells six thousand copies when wolverine was selling seventy thousand. you know they they don't a lot of guys are like i can't believe my readers didn't come but the fact is is they just want to read wolverine stories or Batman stories or X Men stories, which I totally get. Yeah. So I, that's why, like, to write a superhero book, you'd have to turn it on its head. To, in my opinion, I, I don't. And <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like you said, they're like they're I not mean, there for you. They're not. If you're writing, I don't know. They should just be there for me there, personally. No one cares that you're writing. Maybe it, the best guys, sure. Yeah. Well, I think that's kind of cool. Like if Jason Aaron writes a bat story and then Garth Ennis writes a bat story, that's interesting to see their takes on what they would do with Batman. But they're, they're also uh, way up here. Then most of the guys are way here, you know, right here. And they're just kind of, it's just derivative and, and they're just regurgitating stories that they liked when they were kids. Yeah, so. Garth Ennis is doing great work on Batman now. I really enjoy what he's doing. And of course, we're getting a new Batman writer soon enough because everyone seems to be going to Substack, which is it kind of it's, I guess it's a new comic book public. I'm still not really sure what it is. I know it's originally a newsletter. Have you heard about Substack? Yeah, yeah. It looks like that's kind of the new thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, are you, do you, maybe we can get an exclusive. Are you going to go to Substack? Uh, maybe. Really? They, they probably won't take you. Never know. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> You'll say, no, please, guys, I worked with Rick Remender. Come on. Yeah, you, practicing... should my, you should be my manager. Of course. Get... Like, I'll just be your hype man. <laughs> yeah, it'd be great. I'll drive you into the ground, you know. I'll just get yeah. rid of all your contact. Hey, Lee told me that this was that really horrible writer that he doesn't like working with. You know, do you have any work? It's as easy as that. Um, but, yeah, no, so, like, I think, do you, like, I think someone like Alan Moore, 
Like, I'm sure yeah. you're aware of Alan Moore's work. Yeah. Yeah. I think if he never touched the killing joke or, you know, anything else for DC or Marvel, he would have been all right. Like, I think he'd probably still be a multimillionaire. Do you think the same? Uh, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. And so, who were I don't some... know that those, uh, did those books sell well? Well, I mean, Watchmen, I suppose. And then V for Vendetta and From I Hell. I don't know if Watchmen sold that well as a comic. Really? I don't know. I don't, know. I, I don't think it sold like you think it did. Yeah, because I'd say it would have been a lot now. Like, obviously, at this point, back then, maybe not so much. Because I suppose, well, like, it would have just been another random comic. Yeah, Vertigo books didn't, historically, they didn't sell a lot of copies. You know, like 20,000 copies a month was a successful book for Vertigo. 30 was a hit. Wow. So I, I don't know that those books sold that well, but I think they sold decent for a long time. You know, yeah, they built so- a, a firm audience. And it was cool of DC to, you know, and that was Shelley Bond and Karen Berger's baby. And they kept that going. I think those those two women paved the way f- for a lot of what indie books have become. Yeah. So, but I, I don't know that the Alan Moore stuff He's just so good. He probably, yeah. I mean, he's always been on the periphery of comics, anyway. So, yeah, it's. I, I just. I think the big two are, are important to get your name out there, and if that's what you want to do, like that's, that's where your sights are set to work on superhero stuff. What? Why would you? I mean, you're going to create another superhero comic? Kill me. Like, <laughs> There's no room for any more superheroes in this world. They, they, we've done it all. They're, they've all been done. You're not going to reinvent the wheel. So so are you here by saying that you hate DC and Marvel? Is that what you're trying to no, tell me? No, I don't hate DC and Marvel at all. I'm is that saying, what you're saying? So are you telling me you that famous colorist Lee Lowridge just has a hateful passion for the no, colors that he currently works at? No, I'm saying if you want to work <laughs> with superheroes, just go to, go to the companies that have already created them. But I think I just incriminated you. So I'm friends with all these big top editors. So yeah, yeah. It's a no, sting they, operation. They know. There's no more room for any more superheroes. Stop. You reckon? Stop, stop creating. <laughs> we'll just read Batman stories till the day we die. Was there a superhero that you consider underrated or that you've worked on quite a bit that you'd like to work more on? I, I loved, I was on Green Arrow for years. I loved that character. Um, they ruined him in the 2000s, um, but I loved Green Arrow through the 90s. Oh, yeah? I think, I can't remember who was writing it. When was this? Uh, like 94 to late 90s. Was that Trevor Von Eden stuff? Uh-uh. She looked- but like, Ollie Queen was just a derelict and a badass and didn't care. And his best friend was Eddie Fires, the mercenary. And then, and then after that run, they just, and that by that run, I mean like six, seven years, then they cleaned up his image. I think they knew they were going to make the TV show. Um, and then it, then I lost, they kind of blew it. Yeah. I think like, I mean, yeah, I, I enjoyed, like, I really enjoyed Green Arrow's character for like, uh, some of the stuff he's done but i think like comics back in the 80s you could re- you could write you could definitely write like just 24 pages of people punching each other would have sold so much but right now now everything kind of has to have meaning or yeah there has they have to go on story arcs and i think that's brilliant because you can really see comics like evolve but i think if you're a fan in the 80s you can really see like the progression of comics and you're super old so have you seen like the right. progression of comics <laughs> see listen if you're gonna do an insult you can't forget the question you're gonna ask if you're preloading insults, write the question down after the insult so you can go right through it. Okay. Yeah. Is this is this your advice for insulting you specifically? No, it's it's just fru- it's frustrating to watch you fail. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, my apologies, my lord. Um. But yeah, no. Uh, so what was what was even the question? I forget. I just tried to insult you. Oh yeah. Uh, like so, have you seen comics like as a, as a progression? Like you look back at the stuff you were coloring for now, and then like you no know, stuff you were coloring back then, and stuff you were coloring now. You see a difference? Yeah, I, the artwork now is insane. It's yeah. utter insanity how good these guys are. Yeah, it's nuts. It, I wish it would have stopped progressing in like 2000, and, but right about when you were born. That's when it should stop progressing. Yeah. Because now 
People are so damn good. It's nuts. I don't know how. Damn kids. I don't know how people can get books out looking as good as they do. And I, I think they don't. That's part of the problem. You know, that, that's what a lot of people don't think about. If you want a monthly book out, you have to think about stylistically what you can pull off in that month. So yeah. some could call it lazy or it's just it's just what makes sense to that schedule. Because normally your books are on like a six week schedule start to finish. That's script to lettering. So if you're doing the most beautiful work of your life, but it takes you four days to do a page, you're never going to get it done. It'll be a beautiful book, but do that, do that on the side, do that on weekends. Yeah. yeah. And so then like in terms of like coloring comic book pages, you were perfectionist. Like, do you need everything to be the right shade of this color? Like, do you constantly look at your work and say, no, I could have done this better. Or are you a perfectionist? Some uh, on the simple stuff I am on like, busier art and like more flashy stuff I'm not there's no. a time you just need to walk away like to where you just say it's done yeah you can you can noodle with it forever the, the thing is is if there's like I just did a bat page yesterday and I could definitely I could throw a couple more layers of model on it yeah and it would look it would look awesome but it, I, now I'd have to do that throughout and time-wise it's not efficient and it doesn't really make it that much better. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not, and it kind of, I think the more modeling you do, it steps on the art. I, I, I used to do this. I've done this when I've done talks, took like classes. I'll open up like six comic books and I'll throw them all on the floor and mo there'll be the simpler ones and they're all like crazy modeling. And I'll ask the class, what art do you like? And a lot of times the stuff, you can't even tell what that artist drew when you're, when the modeling's so crazy. Like I always call it, I always say, don't step on the art. So yeah. when those, when guys are coloring over the line art and just sort of painting their own thing on top of that line art, and you can't tell if Jim Lee drew it or Jim Aparo drew it, that's a problem. You know, it, there's too much you step, you just don't want to step on the art. I think that you're there to service the art and make the art look as good as you can and help with, tell the story and push the story and set a tone and a mood and emotion. Yeah. And if, it, if, if you get too crazy with it, sure, does it look cool? Yeah, does it look cool to you? Probably looks awesome to you. But when you hit about 1920, you're going to want a little more substance. You know, you're going to want something that hits a little harder that doesn't look as candy coated. And there's nothing wrong with the candy coated stuff. Um, it just doesn't, none of the greatest books, the most heralded books in comics history are full model. They're never that yeah. crazy modeled stuff. I defy you to find them. It's just, it's just, that's, it's very generic. It's like a Michael Bay film. I like Michael Bay movies. Yeah. They are what they are, you know, oh, yeah. but they're not a Frank Miller movie. Not that his movie was good, but it looked good. <laughs> what, you're just saying how much you hate everything? Is that <laughs> no, your stick? You. <laughs> I'm just honest. <laughs> honest. Yeah, you're, 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 very, you're very, very honest. I suppose we can give you that. And but some I, like take, I like to take digs at everybody. So then when I see them, <laughs> go, you talk shit about me on that podcast. I go, yep. <laughs> oh, I'm terrible. I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. I'm a hack, so... <laughs> Now, if I agree, I incriminate myself there. And so you, of course, like you color. Have you ever colored? I'm, I'm sure you've covered quite a few uh, cover colors. Uh, you, I'm sure you've colored quite a few covers, right? Covers? Yeah. Yeah. And so do you put a bit more effort into the covers than you do like the oh, pages? Because, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because you kind of, you want to grab the eye. Way, yeah. Way more effort into a cover. Yeah. Like yeah. four, I'll spend four times the amount of time. Oh, wow. And so have you done a lot of covers recently or... Do you normally work in pages? Yeah, the back cover. I could probably show you. It'll be out. When when's this airing? Uh, I don't know. Probably in a week or so. You know, I'm a very busy man. I have so much interviews. You you wouldn't comprehend. Once you've reached my level, it's just you're just all over the place, and I'm just so busy. Uh, but actually, if you're gonna show something that's not ready, I can just hold it until this is. It doesn't matter. So of course he's on his phone during our interview, just some more professional. No, I'm, I'm only messing. I'm only messing. 
I yeah, I can show you. They're not. Yeah, of yellow. course. It's not going to look good. No, hold on. No, it doesn't wow. look good. You can't see it. No, oh, I can see it just fine. So is that cover for new Batman? Yeah. Nice. That might be too new. I probably shouldn't have shown you that. <laughs> you tried to incriminate me with the Trump comments, but boom, switched it back around. <laughs> All part of my plan. Do you see the DC snipers on your head right there? The red yeah. dot. But that took a while, but it's only one image. You know what I mean? It's not six or eight panels. It's just an image, but I'll spend a lot more time and you know, put all the little doodads in on it just to make it look good. Plus, a lot of times it covers more of an ego piece. You know, it's more like, what's up? You know? <laughs> on your poor, <laughs> what? Is that on your portfolio? You just yeah, say, like, yo, what's up? You know, <laughs> is that how you describe your work? Well, for me, I like to do a modeled cover here and again and really do it up just to show people that think I mo mostly just do simple stuff to go, I can do what you do. I just don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just, <laughs> so you're just extra spiteful. <laughs> like, I know what you do, but I can no, do it, it better. Looks good. It looks awesome. Stuff like that looks great. You just can't do it every day. You can't do it on interior. It's like, you're crazy. It doesn't, it, it doesn't make the story any better. If the yeah. story's good, it could be black and white. I'm a cake decorator. I decorate the cake. It still tastes the same. Yeah. Oh, that's actually, that's surprisingly insightful for someone like you. Um, right. <laughs> well, I get your question. Uh, get you see, you, you see, did. like I, I would never. Uh, but so cover wise, like do you only ever color covers for comics that you uh, like color the interiors from? Or do you ever just get like an email from Marvel that says, hey, can you yeah. do this cover for a new book we're working on? Yeah, I, all different. Yeah, I'll, some, a lot of times the books that I'm on or I'll, I'll do various covers. Yeah. And so, like, do you juggle multiple multiple uh, projects at one time? Yeah, wow. I try to work. I try to only work on one at a time. But sometimes, like nowadays with technology, you know, people will just feed pages. So I'll be getting fed two to four pages every, you know, three or four or five days for six different projects, and I hate that. Yeah, I, I don't like juggling all. I don't like. I, I don't like it at all. Because then you'll be working on six projects for, you know, six weeks. And oh, yeah? it just holds up everything. It holds up the money and you, can, you can't really get your head into the story. I like waiting, getting all the art, or at least most of the art, and then just getting my head into that story that week and then on to the next. But yeah, yeah a lot of times. I mean, I've juggled up to like eight, nine projects simultaneously. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's nutty. It'll make your head explode. Yeah. And so, like, like I said, like, for someone like you that's done, like, over 1,000 comics, I'm sure you'd have to juggle a lot. But I really like your background, and, like, I see some Batman head sketches. Are they from any specific artists? Yeah. Uh, uh, who uh, are they by? Tim Sale. Wow, I, I think I noticed the Tim Sale one. Is that the one at the very end? Yeah. Yeah, uh, nice. Uh, that's Bob Hall. Wait, who... Who did what? Oh, John Delaney. In. That's John Delaney. Oh, yeah? He did Batman Adventures. Oh, yeah. Um, that's... Wait, it's an inker. Hold on. This one's the best one, too. Oh, wait. Oh, it's so faded. Yeah, they're faded. That's right. Wade Von Grawbogger. Wow. Did that. Yeah. So did you I, get all uh, those at conventions? Yeah, I, I had, like... 12 of them oh yeah i had uh this house that i had had a giant vertical wall like a skinny wall and i had them running down the whole wall so one luxuries of being rich wall. yeah it's just you know that's the sign of wealth having a, a tall long skinny wall we have, so yeah, whoever, we have sketches from batman famous batman artists on yeah that does tend to be it and um, well that i went to the con and i just bugged those guys to just to draw me heads real quick and I so assume I you didn't pay them. You just darted as they drew it. No, I did, definitely didn't pay them. <laughs> so all these Batman artists are just going to come after you now. And no, they did it as a gift. <laughs> <laughs> a very one-way gift. Did you give them? <laughs> Dude, I don't. Okay. Oh, wow. Bunch of stuff. Are these all original pages? Yeah. Man. I don't buy art. 
<laughs> you steal it from the artist's table on the way out. It's a gift. <laughs> you just pick up their portfolio and run with it. <laughs> you know, a lot of times, a lot of artists, if I'll, like, uh, if I'm working on their book for a while, they'll just throw me a page. Yeah. Like I just... think that's, I think that's a cool thing to do. And then some stuff was given to me, like Rick Remender gave me a fear agent page from Tony Moore for my wow. birthday one year. Uh, you know, just depends. Oh, yes. But of back, course. back in the day, I used to scan all the art. So I had a studio going and we would scan, hell, three, four hundred pages a month. Oh. So we had all the originals in the studio, which was nuts. So at, at that time, Nick Dragata, you ever read East of West? No, I haven't. Um, well, then that this then this story has no context. But he was always blown away by uh, having all that original art in, which I think made him a better artist. East, East of West. It's a giant Jonathan Hickman comic book. It's like a, oh, I know. Oh, I think I, I I haven't read it, but I think I know what you're talking about. I know Jonathan Hickman, of course. Who does? Yeah. Yeah, you see, damn kids nowadays, you know, with their flip phones, not understanding culture. I know, I completely oh, understand. Oh, you understand it. There's just, there's probably far better stuff now. You like web comics, right? That's what everyone likes. Eh, I mean, no, no, I'm more into actual print stuff. Like, I mean, web comics, I mean, like, I guess they were kind of more popular and stuff like 2010. I don't know if they're as popular now. Good. Good. <laughs> wow. Well, so let me get, let me guess, let me guess. I can kind of predict this. You hate, you hate that whole concept as well. Sorry, are you there? I think you glitch out a little bit. Oh, you're back. Yeah, now. You're back. Perfect. You're back. Oh, so anyway, that... you're telling us about how much you hate web comics? No, I, I just think they're corny. Yeah? Yeah. So how much would it cost to get you to do a web comic? I mean, you know, uh, sure well, I'll do it. if you pay me. <laughs> if you pay me, I would do it. Yeah, that's awesome. I love web comics. <laughs> <laughs> so you could hear twenty twenty dollars ruffle, and you were like, "Oh, to web comics." Did someone say web comics? Yeah, I love web comics. Yeah, you strike me as the person to, like I said, you know, you strike me as someone who just loves all pieces of culture. You know, you don't hate anything. You know, anything like that. I'm definitely not a hater. <laughs> like I said, you're like you said, you're very honest. You know, that comes true. No, I love web comics. They're awesome. They'll yeah. stand the test of time. <laughs> you can you can you can almost know when he's lying and but so like, said, you have comics to... are like the tiktok of comics yeah. <laughs> oh yes oh yes tiktok it, like I, you're, you're throwing out the pop culture i can get your you're a fellow young man you know you can really see it there yeah dude that, my tiktok's on fire <laughs> <laughs> is it lit is it rad oh so lit <laughs> <laughs> oh wow okay i kind of hate this interview now but i'll still have to know when you're around and so you also got to do batman adventures oh, and that was Sorry. I cut you off. Yeah, you, oh, you, know, you almost got me there. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, but Batman Adventures. So that was kind of like, it was obviously kind of emulated the Batman animated series style. So did yeah. you color that in the style of the TV show? Yeah, uh, that book I wanted to do so bad when I got into comics. Like My goal was to get on that book. Oh, yeah? My bigger goal, I always wanted to work for Vertigo. But I had a feeling, for some reason, I thought Batman Adventures could get me work up. Vertigo was upstairs from DCU in the DC offices. So I was always thought if I could do Batman adventures, I could, then I can move upstairs to Vertigo, which Vertigo didn't sell as well. It wasn't as well known, but I, I like stuff. But yeah. Batman adventures was the best. Oh yeah. That's super cool. so I'd love to, they relaunched it. I was hoping to get back on it. Um, or the uh, Batman Beyond when that came back out. Oh, right. I reached out, said, I'd love to be a part of it, but I I, I guess I'm not under contract. They blocked your email or something, I'm sure. No, it, it happened at a time when uh, the guy who was running DC didn't like me. Oh, really? He didn't like you? So I he wonder. Blacklisted, he blacklisted me, so no one was allowed to hire me for a couple of years. Was it because of your outright honesty? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Did I go silent? 
Oh, no, you're back here. Sorry, you just cut out a little bit. Like I said, my internet is not very good today. I, I assume it's just you cursing it. But like I said, that, that honesty of yours, you know, I, I yeah. can see how maybe what I like you're in my good books already. So you have that going for you, you know, just for your outright honesty. And but, you yeah, know, so like Batman versus Big B, you've been coloring that right now. Is that the current series you're working on? Right. Yeah. So that comes out September, right? Yeah. So what's it been like getting to work on that? Uh, it's fun because I've wor- yeah, I worked on Fables forever. Oh, yeah. So Willingham over there and Brian Level is a good buddy of mine. Amazing. And then, uh, Jay Leestein doing the inks. So it's cool. I was Skyping with Brian before I talked to you. Oh, wow. Uh, he's a good guy. So, so your so- day's just significantly gotten worse because now you're talking to me. Correct. Yeah, the highs like- and the lows. Yeah. Oh, the highs and the gutter. The like action. I said, I was interviewing Jason Aaron, the Jason Aaron, and now I'm talking to you. Right, but Jason would probably disagree with you. He he probably much rather hang out with me than himself. Yeah, no, Jason told me, and I quote, "Wow, Daniel, you're so much better than Lee Lowridge. Don't check with him because you know he said keep that on the down low, but he he said it practically verbatim. Um, and mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> just take my word on that. Um, but of course, uh, you've obviously done quite a few different things. But have you noticed like improvement? As an art, as a colorist, like you look back to your earlier work and think, oh, I could have done this or, oh, I should have done this. Yeah. I yeah. think everything from the 90s, I feel that way about. Yeah. And you, does, is it hard for you to look back at some of your old work? Because I know for some people it is. No, I, it was so limited in what you could do. Like back in the day, the, the palette you could use, there was only like 124 colors. Yeah. That's it. That's all you got. And out of 124, you could only use like 80. Wow. So, and there, you couldn't do effects, so you were kind of limited by the technology. And then once it went digital, uh, then I had full control. But it took a while to learn how to do that, you know, halfway decent. So, yeah, I, I, I yeah, there, I definitely regret how a lot of them look. But I, but then I love them in a nostalgic way. Yeah, uh, I like some like extreme justice. I mean, what a terrible book, but. I, it was a fun time in my life. So, but it looked, what a terrible book. I was the worst fit for that. Oh yeah. I mean, you want a brown, you want I've a never brown heard someone superhero? talk about their own work like that, but here we are. Yeah. You want your superhero book brown? Hire me. In, in, in yeah. Is that your new tagline? Like I said, as your future manager, I need to know these things. And but yeah, so like, I, was, I wasn't a good call for that book. Uh, yeah. And so like, do you, do you get, is there a bit more freedom? Because I know for writers and artists, they're kind of is, but I don't know for colors, but is there a bit more freedom for like a book from Image or like Dark Horse as opposed to Marvel or DC? Yeah. Yeah, really? For you as a colorist? For everybody. Yeah, so how, how, how for you as a colorist, you know, how's it more freeing? Uh, so it's our book. We, yeah. you know, everybody is in complete control of that. So the team decides what they want to do with that book, story-wise and artistically. You know, with Marvel, the X-Men's the X-Men, you know, pay to play. So you got you to gotta do it that way, the Marvel way, and, and yes. um, kind of stay on their, you know, on, you know, aesthetically to what they want, which is fine. Yeah. And so have you colored much team books? Teen? Team. Oh, team. team? Yeah. Yeah. Really? What type of works? Every, all of them. Oh, yeah. And so is that different every, than working on a comic? Team. Sorry? Every team. Every team. <laughs> yeah. The Suicide Squad, you know, Doom Patrol, The Avengers? Uh, uh, no. X Men? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think you've done a bit of work on X Men. And, but like, so. It I mean, seems a pain in the ass. It's so many characters to keep up with color wise. Yeah. I mean, your outfit, I mean, I couldn't imagine drawing wise, it, it must make, you know, the artist crazy. Then you have to get the colors exactly right. Yeah, you'll spend more time noodling over that stuff than, than anything else. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Like I did a, a what was it, Zero Hour? Oh, yeah. Zero Hour was a series in the 90s with like every freaking superhero. I did Marvel versus DC. Oh. every character i was stoked to do it i was like oh yeah this is their big book no it was a nightmare no i had stacks of reference for characters they were pulling out of the woodwork 
<laughs> yeah. No. Do I like teen books? No. <laughs> You're not liking someone. I'm just I so like, surprised. No, no. I like teen books. I don't like working on them. Oh, yeah? Wow. Okay. And so, like, I interviewed Alex Sinclair, and I know he did a lot of Justice League uh, colors on yeah. that series and he like he's an amazing color it's probably probably one of my favorite colors in the whole world and i you know you're you're there <laughs> somewhere he's somewhere alex, alex is awesome yeah he's amazing you're not gonna get me, i won't say anything bad about alex i like alex we're friends <laughs> wow for the first time someone yeah. <laughs> he's yet to have a spiteful comment you picked a good person yeah you could see like the grinds turning his head trying to pick out a flaw you could kind of see it there right uh, right <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so he said because like there's a lot of light sources because like Wonder Woman's bracelet would have like a light shining onto the other characters, yeah. and this because that's the same for you. Like, and is light source is something that you deal with a lot in your work? Yeah, it's the first thing I look at. Where where is it coming from? Where's that no shadow go? You know, I'll I'll find it in the art first, and then set the whole page based on where the, that source is coming from. So if you have a good artist, that artist will set that light source spot on. And if not, I'll, I'll take it, you know, I'll just, I'll, yeah. I'll create. Sorry, somebody's here. Um, yeah, but Alex is, man, he's, you know, he's gone over Jim Lee for decades. Yeah. Lucky and so is there any like writer or artist in particular that are some of your heroes that you'd like to work with? Uh, I, I want to, I think, Mike Mignola, I want to, I'd love oh, to go yes. over his art. I, 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 I don't believe that I have. We've done books together. No way. But. Um, you worked on Hellboy. Uh, Did you color his art? Yeah, but, yeah, but I haven't gone over his art. Oh, right. So. Does he color his own work? No. Um, he has. Uh, he has the same colorist he's had forever. Oh wow! Oh, this guy, but I'd like to jump in there for a story. That that he's kind of my bucket list. Yeah. I don't know if there's anyone I haven't worked with. Yeah, you because like uh, I mean, for someone who's done like two thousand comics, you probably color just about every artist there is. About everybody, you know, everybody from the past, I guess, but not including contemporary people. Yeah, Mike Mignola, that's the bucket list. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's that, that's the guy I'd like to go over. And so is Hellboy like was there any like moment in comics for you that felt like the, like the peak is surreal? Like was it getting to work in Star Wars? Was that like oh this is happening, or was it getting to work in Hellboy or you know DC or Marvel? Was there one character that you never thought you get to work on when you actually got to? It was a bit surreal for you. Star Wars was pretty surreal. Yeah, uh, that's pretty cool. I'm sure there was another book way back. I can't remember what it was, but it was another license. Oh, Godzilla. I got to work on Godzilla years back. I'd worked on Godzilla with Dark Horse and then I got to with Legendary. Yeah. When I was working on Godzilla. I was a Godzilla lunatic growing up. So oh. that, was pretty, that was pretty great. So like, did you grow up with the black and white version of Godzilla? Oh, this, you mean the movies? <laughs> yeah, like that, like 40s version. Was that for you? Uh, yeah, the earliest ones. Wow. Like where, and where, like, where he ate a tree or something, or he pushed a tree, like all of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, it was like puppets or something. I like, or, they were, oh yeah, they were all puppets. They were guys in suits. Yeah. The early Godzilla ones. Yeah, they're all overdubbed and they were terrible, but they were great. <laughs> and if you watch a Godzilla version, Godzilla film now, it's like. Just, oh, I like, love yeah the new stuff. Yeah. Godzilla versus Kong. Did you enjoy that? I thought it was pretty good. I uh, it's a monster movie. Yeah. You know, I think it's a great monster movie. Yeah, Kong. It's Kong could good. obviously take Godzilla in a fight easily. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, he's, like, eight foot tall. He's, like, a, well, probably, like, 800 feet tall. He's just a massive gorilla. And like, what, what's better than that? But there was so much hype around that film. So, like, getting to actually see it coming out. Unfortunately, I don't think it was so great in cinemas because, of course, COVID was around then. So, like, have you checked out? Is there any films recently that you've watched that you'd enjoy? Uh, on the superhero side? No. Or just any film in general. Have you seen the new Suicide Squad? No, I, I'm not, I won't watch it. 
Oh, it's, it's actually, it's not, it's not too bad. It's like, it, like it, it, the last one was so bad. Yeah. Yeah. I know this one. If you're a comic book fan, you'll like really enjoy. It. I mean, it's a bit saying like there's a walking shark played by Sylvester Stallone, but like, it's okay. actually, it's, it's not, it's a good film. It's probably, you know, not so much for everyone, but I think you'll really enjoy it. And like it's 16s. So, you know, I might give it a try. I like, I like Deadpool. I thought Deadpool was great. Yeah. I, the one. I thought the second one was fine, but the first one was really good. Yeah, and it was so hard for me to get into the cinemas to see Suicide Squad. Oh, man, I had, I had this big Machiavellian master plan. I wore jeans. I wore this jacket that made me look maybe like a bit older. I stuffed socks in my shoes, which gave me an extra inch. And he just let us in. He really didn't care. So, yeah, I have that going for me. Yeah, generally, the guy at the movie theater doesn't really care about much. Yeah, it depends if it's like, you, sometimes you get lucky, but sometimes you get people who are like, no, because, and especially if it's someone, everyone, like, I mean, I know Deadpool. Imagine how many kids tried to get into that, like, so when something like that but this dude he just let us in perfectly so yeah but yeah it's a really good film like and it's definitely 16s like it's like like explosions everywhere you know, oh yeah pretty gory so yeah I'm, I'm sure you'll enjoy it you know you seem someone like you seem as someone who just hates everything so i'm not sure what to recommend to you but yeah you should check out suicide squad <laughs> I, I like that to a 13 year old i am a, i guess i am a hater <laughs> but i'm smiling the whole time i can't you can't i can't hate and smile at the same time Oh, but is that your philosophy? I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's part of your charm, you know. That, that's yeah. what makes you. That's what. That's what makes you Lee Lowridge. I'm. I'm assuming that's how you get so much jobs. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I just enjoy talking smack. Maybe that's. <laughs> you just enjoy winding people up. Uh, but the last yeah. uh, few questions that's I want to touch. On, uh, the last uh, few questions I want to touch on before we finish up. Uh, so if you could, what's your dream comic? If you could do a comic book, any comic book character, uh, who's that one character you'd like to work on that you haven't gotten to yet, which is probably impossible because you've worked on just about everyone. Uh, probably yeah, Hellboy. Oh, yeah? I know. With Didn't Mignola. you do a Hellboy annual or something? Yeah, but I want to do Mignola Hellboy. Oh, right. What did you do on the Hellboy? What, what did you call her there? Uh, it was another, it was like a, in the Hellboy universe. Oh, so I've done right. HRD stuff and, you know. Yeah. I've done stuff in that, in that world, but not Mignola writing Hellboy. Mm. That's, so what you, that's what, I, that's what I, I'd like to do. I assume with all your pull, you'll just message Mignola and be like, hey, can I, you know, can I work with you, please? <laughs> yeah. He I'm very kind, you know, I'm very humble, you know. <laughs> Is that, <laughs> um, but the, my last and final question, because I've taken up so much of your time. Um, if anyone yeah. was talking, <laughs> that's just that's something I say just to be kind, you know. No one it ever is, takes me up on it. You if... literally be doing anything right now with this. But come on. <laughs> all right, all right. My apologies. If anyone's looking to get into comic books, what advice would you have for them? Wait, what's the question? Of course, you're not listening. I'm not surprised. No, if anyone was... like a... are you on Adderall? <laughs> Oh yes, of course. That's that's a totally good. <laughs> I mean, you know, don't don't uh, don't inflict yourself onto me. And um, but so, what, what advice would you have for anyone looking to get into comic books? I did not answer this already. No, you you. I asked you what would you say to young Lee Lowridge looking to get into comics. Oh, oh, oh. you I took that thing, as advice thing. because you're a bit, you know. Um, I would say work your butt off. Be self-aware, like you know what good art looks like, you know what a good story is, and you should know whether your art looks good or not, or your story sucks or doesn't. If you don't have that self-awareness, move on. Yeah. You have to be honest about your abilities and what you can do, and then have to be willing to bust your ass to make it happen. And do your own stuff. Make your own stories. You're young. You start now. Oh, yeah. You'll have a catalog of stuff. You know, it's all about exposure. Start creating stories now and drawing now. Don't be too edgy now because you'll regret it later. We can work on that when you're when you're around here. And, you know, when you have something to reflect upon and you have no really life to lose at that point. <laughs> is, that, is that what you think life is? Just one game and now you're at the end stage, you know, not matters? Yeah. yeah. If I blow it now, what do I care? <laughs> um <laughs> But I, I would say you have to be self-aware and know I've seen it so many times where, man, guys I really like and their art's terrible. And, they, and, and I'll be honest, I'll tell them, I'll be like, you know, you're really good at 
faces, but the rest of it's not. If someone says you're not there yet, it means your, your stuff's not good. And you need to work at it harder, but you need to be honest about whether you can get to that level or not. So be honest with yourself. Cause I know guys that are great artists now that we're always honest. The best guys are honest with themselves. The best guys are truly never happy with their art. Cause if you're like, that's the dopest shit, that's, it's not good. It's probably not good. And you never seem happy. So you must be amazing. No, I'm, I'm miserable all day. I'm anything. I'm trying to do anything to make dopamine fire in my brain. <laughs> so after this though i'm so shocked because this whole time you've just been so happy and chipper and so just polite about everything you know i, I didn't see that coming. i think i've been a joy what i think i've been a joy of course you know and yet you made me roll out the red carpet for you which was a bit weird you know and the artificial grass and all that but you know i feel you... like i was probably a lot more upbeat than jason aaron jason's <laughs> probably like oh in arkansas or whatever Quote on place he lives, you know, it's like, oh man, I gotta go till the fields. Zero you know? times Jason Aaron tried to incriminate me. You about five times. So you yeah, know, you get to well, see now it. you don't even know what you just did. Now I'm gonna fight with Jason Aaron. I see <laughs> All I'm right. Coming. I mean, I guess I just started this, you know. Teach me to yeah. flex about interviewing Jason Aaron, you know. Dream yeah. interview. Um, but before you finish up, you, you want what? why don't you throw Alex Sinclair? Now I'm mad at Alex Sinclair. <laughs> Are you just going to go through my YouTube catalog of interviews and be like, I hate that guy. I hate that guy. I didn't say I hate him. Just say we're in a feud. You're starting feuds between us. Feuds? No, no, no. You, hey, you did all this handiwork yourself. You know, you reap what you sow. Uh, but before we finish up, you on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, anything like that? Yeah, it's just my name. Yeah. Lee Lowridge. Lee Lowridge. That's it. Yeah. I, mean, I assume you're not great with the internet. You know, you need people to help you. Right. Yeah. Sure. You're like... <laughs> <laughs> and your tiktok account your tiktok account is that lee lowridge <laughs> you know someday your generation you'll actually get to you know communicate and talk with people in in real time in a real room wow it'll, it'll yeah it's, it's almost as if there's this deadly virus going around in the world but yeah kids you get out more you know Dude, you, should be, you gotta be tough man <laughs> i'm sure that will help against covid you know virus you're not gonna get me <laughs> it can't legally enter you without your consent, so you're okay. <laughs> but uh, coming so, to Florida here. Florida's getting ravaged right now. By everyone's canceling their MegaCon appearances, so, you know. Yeah, Florida's getting hammered because they're all rednecks down there. <laughs> <laughs> I got my guns. I got the virus. It's <laughs> one thing. You, they'll expose yourself in front of the place you live. Like, yeah, this place sucks. <laughs> I hate everyone here. Your Keep your vaccine out of here. <laughs> it's the vi it's the 5g you know it's giving you mutant powers that's it I think put bill gates into my body <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing with the vaccine like so many people think that it's all this and of course the government are watching us all and you know the president is a lizard person and all this just these all things that probably have legs to them <laughs> and um, so anything you'd like to promote new comics what's that anything you'd like to promote any new comics no we already talked about this, dude. Yeah, but this is the closing segment, so you have to oh, bring oh, it up again. A good closer. No, oh, just, here. Read, just read every any comic that you think looks cool. Buy it. Oh, here. Great. Now I have to do yeah. his work. All right, Deadly Class 47 You're or 48. I believe it's on. Go pick down. it up from your local comic books. <laughs> just be quiet for a minute while I promote your work. Yeah, <laughs> and you can... Daniel tell you what to buy. Buy what you want. <laughs> you can buy. go get what Batman you know, versus Big B from your local comic book store as well. And anything with Lee Lowridge's name, uh, just collect it and you can use it to uh, warm your fire at night. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you on the next video. Go check out uh, uh, Lee's work. I, I, I mean, I guess I kind of recommend that you do, you know, if that's what you're into. I guess, you know. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you on the next video. Please be sure to go follow me on Twitter at SamboGizmo1. Donate to National Deaf Children's Society. Link for that down in the description. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you on the next video. Uh, and stay safe and thank you all for watching.